All right, looks like we're in. Here we are, we're live. Hello, everybody. Hello, happy Equinox. Happy Equinox. I am here with my sister, mentor, friend, Kenny Hello. Mountain. And, um, yeah, we just want to welcome you to tune in with us about sacred sexuality. For you, this might be like, oh, I know this topic. This is no big deal for me. Um, I want to invite you to revisit the foundations and like, what is sacred? What is sexuality? And like, why are we using this term again and again in our culture and our marketing and our mainstream, you know, notions of how we relate to sex and identify with our experience. So I'm hoping today we can just get into some like juicy little nuggets and inspire you to walk away wanting to create a more fulfilling experience or a deeper inquiry of your own relationship to a central erotic part of yourself. So I am Aya Bonagorio and this is Kelly Mountain. Um, I am the founder of Obsidian Womb Wellness and the Embodied Path of the Priestess. Um, I've been advocating, educating, and empowering primarily women, but also men, but women to take charge of their fertility, their reproductive health, and reclaim what is called sexual sovereignty. And I do this through a lot of education and programs here in California. Um, Kelly, do you want to introduce yourself and what magic you bring forth and wisdom? Uh, sure. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm Kelly Mountain of Goddess Modern. I support women through holistic wellness, feminine embodiment, transformational work, and relationships and intimacy. I work mostly with women, um, also couples and men. I also am a writer, an artist, and event producer. Mm, I love it. So let's get into the nitty gritty. And I've known Kelly for like, what is it, seven, eight years now? I think even longer, actually. Um, trying to remember the first time we met, but well, like I, think, I think we, yeah, I think we, yeah. it goes back. I mean, we were in the dance community together starting, I mean, that for me in the Bay Area started in 2007. So I can't, I'm not sure at what time exactly we crossed points, um, cross paths then, but it's been a while. We've definitely witnessed each other um, blossoming on our journeys for quite a while and have been friends and um, yeah, mentors to each other and um, sources of inspiration. And we work in a lot of the same realms. So I'm really happy to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me to join you on this very potent topic and perfect with the fall equinox. It's the first day of Libra, which is all about Balance. Love, yeah, balance, harmony, relationship, um, sexuality, intimacy. So it's really a beautiful time to have this conversation, at least to crack it open. I think that um, it's quite a, there's quite a lot to it. So we'll, we'll see how far we get today. Yeah. And um, I've enjoyed, yeah, I've enjoyed growing with you over the years and dancing. Um, with that said, um, crack open i like that like um shell that shell of like what is sacred let's start there like why are we talking about sacred sexuality today as if this isn't something that we already know so much about <laughs> um what is this like theme of the sacred and like what makes sexuality sacred i think i really want to invite you here if you're on if you're listening to the replay or the live call like what make sexuality sacred for you? What's a sacred experience? Yeah, well, um, so, well, I guess if we just start with the word sacred, um, when I looked up the definitions and the root meanings of that word, um, a lot of what I see is in terms of reverence, devotion, commitment, and connection to a higher power. Um, so when in combined with sexuality, it's like, you know, sexuality done in a way that opens a pathway for that quality of connection. But it's so, it's so, you know, the, and then you take the term sexuality and I think that's understood what that is, but how we each explore that experience that is going to be very unique to us. So, you know, some people really don't feel like they have a connection to a higher power. Um, so, you know, how would sacred sexuality 
be experienced for them, you know? So that's, it's, it's, and then other people are very connected to a, a higher power. And then there's like everything in between. And so, you know, when it comes to sexuality, I think it's important that we all understand that, yes, there's a definition of what that is. And at the same time, it's such a, it's such a colorful, ever-changing, um, uh, I guess, way that we experience it in ourselves. Mm. Mm, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. And um, yeah, if I can just add, um, I think that sex can be a very spiritual experience. And some of you have maybe had spiritual experiences during intercourse or foreplay, or just in, you know, erotic aroused states with other people. And so my question for you is like, how do you experience your arousal? How do you experience your sexuality? And I think that there's, you know, a lot of us think of like sacred as being, sacred sex can be a spiritual luminous state that brings heightened awareness to us and long lasting beneficial health benefits, right? And um, in essence, yes, it could be this, but it might be something completely different for you. As for one person, um, it could be like being in a very safe container with a monogamous partner that they trust and having a deep emotional bond that awakens the erotic, you know, um, experience of, of something being sacred because it's like special. It's just between one person and the other. But for another person, a sacred experience of sex could be like, on the playa at Burning Man, <laughs> like meeting somebody that you never met before and like living out this like long, you know, um, pantheonic, like mythical aspect of yourself that is completely aroused and met on all of these spiritual levels that you've been seeking out your entire life. And it could be a complete stranger, but deeply meaningful to your soul and your existence here on planet Earth, right? So there's like different, um, again, dualities to what your experience could be that is sacred. <laughs> yeah, that's a beautiful way to say it. And that, that illustrates again, the, the fact that when we talk about sacred sexuality, there's a whole range, there's a whole spectrum mm. of how that can look. And I think to take it a little bit further, if we're going to look at what's sacred, it could help to look at what's mundane. Mm. Yes. to help understand more about what's sacred, what are, what's mundane. And I know that when I work with women, couples, and men regarding sexuality, intimacy, and relationships, oftentimes people are seeking for guidance on how to increase the quality of intimacy, the quality of sexual connection. Um, and this seems to be a very hot topic for many, many people out there. And so, um, you know, this piece around like separating the mundane from the sacred and then regarding sexual intimacy and connection, like how to create the space for that sacredness mm. and what, so in a way that separates it from the, um, the mundane of the rest of like the everyday daily grind that we live. Yeah. I thank you. Like, how do we create space for our experience to be sacred, especially if we haven't experienced that or associated it or made time for like our lovemaking ritual to be something that is spiritual and divine to us and coming from a place that is of a higher power. Now, it might be that every time we have sex, it's, it is a higher power in and of itself. But I don't think that's always the case, only because I work with like hundreds of women coaching them on this topic. We're so many sisters out there and people. Um, I work with a lot of very spiritually identified people who have gone on deep journeys to um, transform, to know, to access self-development in their lives. And I find that even many of them who are very evolved still come to me and have this same issue of like not being able to access orgasm, not being able to um, maybe even being in a relationship long term with somebody that they feel safe with, but still not being able to ask for what they want, identify what they want, or maybe still feeling numb down there, feeling numb, shut down, um, maybe pain 
during sex, but still kind of fawning the experience or, or placating to what the other person wants without actually experiencing a super sweet divine connection to themselves through this other person, right? It's through the synergy or um, what is it that Osho calls it? The bioelectricity of each other's bodies. Um, so I'm really interested um, in how we can get to a place where we can really take our time to feel what we need to feel on all levels, like centrally awaken to the eroticism of the divine connection that's in the moment, the polarity of like, maybe there's another person in the room with you that you love, that you don't love, but that's creating this electricity for you to enter into what might be a more meaningful experience. I think sacred is saying, this is a really truly meaningful experience to you. And therefore it's sacred, it's special. It's a container that doesn't exist anywhere else in the universe, <laughs> but perhaps activated by your juices <laughs> and another person. <laughs> Literal juices. Um, yeah, so I think yeah. it's, it's a good point to also um, kind of, oftentimes for me, when I am trying to get perspective on something, I want to step back. I want to zoom way out because I want to see a timeline of evolution. I want to see where was this way, way, way back and where is it now and like kind of track. And so um, to speak to that quickly, so it's actually, it's an evolutionary development that humans face each other during sex and have the option, have the ability to make eye contact and kiss with the mouth. If you look at all mammals, um, I think, I think even, well, I don't know about like apes and, um, you know, chimpanzees and stuff. I think that they still are turned um, away from each other, I think. But if you look, um, it's actually a newer development for, for a species to have sex facing each other where the face and the, the embrace and everything is possible. And I think that's really interesting. It's like, I wonder why would that be? Why would nature create that? And it's about, because when we're connected during lovemaking, during sex, when we're the eye gaze and the mouth and the embrace, it creates a, even a very intense hormonal response. Um, oxytocin, serotonin, dopamine, endorphins, and all of these, what they're doing is connecting the couple. And ultimately, the way it serves biology is that the more that that happens, the more likely it is for that couple to reproduce and stay together and create a safe, secure um, life for the child. And that's what life, all, all life wants is to reproduce and thrive. So it's always going to be conspiring to figure out how to do this. Lucky for yeah. us. Lucky for um, us. This is all really pleasurable. <laughs> as you're speaking about it, my senses are getting awakened. I was like, yes, I remember like, that feels. Um, eye contact, you know, breath, um, touching, you know, the senses of just like being, I'm, if you know me, I'm a very sensual person. I'm a body worker. I'm a dancer. I love to give and receive touch. And like, for me, I just actually crave more and more of it. It doesn't like, it's not like I just got full. I'm good. I'm done. It's like, oh no, it just can keep going on and on and on, which is kind of the excess, excess, uh, accentuating the whole idea of like being multi-orgasmic. Now, this is another topic, so I'm not going to go there today of like, you know, orgasm and pleasure and like we can really um, ride the wave of, of all of those, you know, beautiful senses. For some of us, orgasm is a very spiritual experience and some of us that can't actually access that for whatever blocks or ways that we prevent ourselves we might feel shame or guilt or just, you know, really critical of ourselves. Well, what I want to speak to actually, I want to ask some of you on the call right now, um, just to reflect on any memorable experiences and please do this throughout today, do this with journaling, but like, I want you to think about memorable experiences that you've had that have been sexual, that have been positive, that have been very memorable and special. <laughs> for you sacred and what about them made those juicy moments like what made it memorable 
you know, was it the way that you were approached? Was it the way that you were touched? Is it because there was a strong emotional intimacy? What was it that bonded you to that experience and it being specifically sacred or special for you? Um, I want to ask you, Kelly, like what, what is a sacred sexual experience for you? Like, how do you identify with that experience in your reality? Yeah, it's, um, well, thanks for the question. Um, I can say that I, in my experience, I definitely have been on my own journey of progression with this aspect of myself and my life and how I explore it and enjoy it. And um, I'll say that the experiences that felt really sacred to me were when the per I felt so the person I was with, I felt so completely seen and accepted and cherished and um and just like that connection and that acceptance and then you know i've had moments of sexual experience that felt sacred where um there was you know we were really i'll say there was like a lot of movement and then i've had other moments of like just like sacred depth um, where there's like just complete stillness and just like, we're just so linked up and present that we're like almost n no movement is needed at all. So again, this is, I guess the point is like, there's no one way that this looks. Um, I've experienced it in, in like a quickie I've experienced in, in a three hour lovemaking session. So it really can be so many different things, but ultimately there's a, there's a quality of presence. There's a quality of connection. There's a quality of within that space, allowing myself to be fully seen and allowing myself to fully express. So I, I think that's mm -hmm. been a big part of how my journey has evolved over time. I see you. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> that's so important. Just like the quality of presence that we're given by another individually, individual and feeling seen. Yeah, really feeling seen. Um, I know for me, like those that presence and being seen um, really relaxes me and opens me up. And it's in that state of relaxation um, or that the nervous system regulates that, like, I can allow myself to have a more pleasurable experience. Um, for me, like a sacred sexual experience, and you got me kind of reflecting deeper, like, well, what is it for me? I know for me, um, when there's no agenda, like when there's a sacred container, yes, we're going to go into love making, and we've designated some time and space for this, but that there's like no rush, no hurry. There's no agenda to get to a designated goal, but there's a complete surrender to being in devotion of each other and each other's pleasure and each other's like well-being. Yeah. And for me also in that, um, that container, usually it's with one monogamous individual where we have developed a strong emotional bond. Usually there needs to be emotional content, like that there's a, a feeling that like I'm emotionally connected to this person where I feel seen and understood and these experiences bond us and therefore we have a certain amount of trust and allyship together. And we can confide on each other and go on a journey and open up deeper realms that maybe haven't been touched yet. <laughs> and in that, it's like, oh, this is such a special person. This is such a special experience that I'm having. And I only get to share it this one moment in time. Like the most sacred part of me meets the most sacred part of this other being. And we're in this beautiful dance or fusion and union. And so I, I understand that psychologically and emotionally and in my senses. So through touch, through like this, the really slowing down and, and the different levels of touch uh, are really important for me. Could be just like the softest touch to like really firm, you know, full on like, I'm here, I got you touch. Um, 
anyways, I could elaborate on that forever. I can feel myself going into like that, the fantasy of it all, but I want to pull it back to the present moment and to see what takeaway. Thank you for being here with us today. And we just wanted to like land this conversation for the first time with our community here and hope that we can inspire you to look at um, what it has worked for you, what type of experience you want to have with this sacred gift that you have to generate life or life-giving forces in your body with another being. <laughs> I, and I agree with you that um, also for me, you know, um, the connection is my turn on. Um, mm. I'm not, I, in my experiences, and, and again, I think sexually everybody's wired differently. So what works, what's true for one person is not going to be true for me and you and vice versa. And so um, it's really important that we all really explore what this is for ourselves. It's very unique to us. And so, but for me, the connection is the turn on. And um, I think it's, you know, one area that I tend to really guide my clients on, in this topic is foreplay begins outside the bedroom, mm. especially for women. This is really important. Foreplay begins outside the bedroom. It's all of the little small moments of exchange of how each other show up for each other, of how they show affection through words, through actions, um, through gifts, through, um, you know, so many different ways. And so this, I would say, is like kind of the energetic layer of intimacy it's part of the energetic layer of intimacy for me i i think of intimacy as like a flower there's these outer petals and then there's the center of the flower and the outer petals go from um energetic to emotional to physical that is loving and sensual but not sexual and then to the center which is sexual i have a blog that i've written on my website about this i'll share it with you in a minute um the anatomy of intimacy and so i think one area where people get um challenged is because in our culture we don't have a lot of awareness around um relationship to self first of all but let alone with another the importance the value the necessity of of energetic emotional and physical intimacy um how we are in relationship with that to ourselves and how we share that with another we are in our cult culture hyper focused on sexual intimacy um so it's like that just to bypass all the other layers and just go straight for the center and Hey, I mean, not to say that that can't ever work ever, but I will say that, especially for women that will not keep them satisfied for very long, they will be wanting <laughs> more <laughs> and men too, men want more too. But I think, you know, we're at a time, it's interesting, you know, this topic of sacred sexuality, that's so hot now, and that's been so for a while and is just continuing to evolve. It's interesting. I think part of why it's so is that as the equality, the balance um, between power of men and women um, progresses, you know, this topic becomes more and more relevant because as women, we're now giving a space to where our needs, our desires, they're, they mean something, they have value and we have a right to speak them. We have a right to express what they are. Whereas in, in the past, you know, sacred sexuality, like, it doesn't really matter. Just the woman's there to do what the man needs to do to take care of himself. And she's her, his property. And I mean, that's how it had been for in various ways for a long, long time. So I think the fact that it's even a hot topic is actually a good sign that the, that balance between the masculine and feminine is really taking root. And it's a cool time to be alive because we're all um, participating in the, in the rewriting of, of the story. Thank you. Yeah. We are rewriting the story and yeah, it's beautiful to see the like the revolution and evolution of humans around their consciousness and wanting to bring more awareness and consciousness into how we relate to each other, especially in such vulnerable topics as the bedroom. So with that said, um, thank you so much. I want to let Y'all know how you can stay in touch with me and Kelly. And if you want to hear more about this, um, I mean, we can talk about it for hours. I think we'll do another video um, and just go into some more deeper, distinct, you know, topics around sex sacred sexuality and how maybe we can benefit from 
um, learning about it more. Yeah. Would you like to share, Kelly, how we can stay in touch with you today? Sure. Yeah. So my website is goddessmodern.com and my Instagram is goddess.modern. Um, I also have a goddess modern YouTube channel and I have a goddess modern Facebook page. So those are some ways that you can get in touch. Um, my website features a lot of my writing. So if you're interested in learning more about um, these topics that we're speaking here, um, also transformational work, feminine embodiment and holistic wellness, then you might um, enjoy visiting my website. Otherwise, I have a lot more content that I share. I'm mostly on Instagram. So I have a lot of content that I share there as well. Yeah. More juicy videos. Thank you, sweetheart. Yeah. And Kelly is in San Rafael. Yeah. San Rafael. Yeah. In Bay Area. California. And I'm over here in the Santa Cruz Mountains. And if you'd like to get in touch with me, um, I am obsidianwomb.com. Obsidian is a black crystal. Um, I'm like, do I have any around here? I have, it's a black crystal, um, volcanic glass that I work with. And um, you can also on there um, reach out to me directly here on my Facebook page or Aya Bonagorio Instagram, Obsidian Woman Instagram. I'm going to offer to you all today what's called a sexual sovereignty activation session. Um, I'm 30 minutes are free. If you go to my website, you can sign up there. Um, sexual sovereignty is really about owning your identity, success, pleasure, harmonizing with your female hormones, looking at, you know, intergenerational traumas and things that might have might hold you back from having the life that you truly desire and the relationship to your sexuality and to all of your prowess that you truly desire here and now. Um, so if you're interested in accessing a free consultation with me, um, just reach out and we look forward to seeing you again. Happy Equinox. Oh, May I say yeah. one more thing just to close. Just so, um, so one thing I want to just end with is the farther you go down the exploration of what's sacred, versus what's mundane, the more you realize that everything is sacred. And what I want to say is there's a quote that says the way we do one thing is the way we do everything. So I really want to leave that with people to under to like, think about like, how could that possibly be true for you? And how can you bring like, if, if the way you do one thing is the way you do everything, how does that relate to your experience of sacred sexuality? So just to play with that um, a Thank little bit. You. Yeah. I love that. That makes me want to close with, um, I'm going to pick a Rumi card, um, card here and see what the quote of the day is. The only lasting beauty is the beauty Aww. of the heart. I'm not sure if you can read that or if it comes yeah, out. Yeah, it does come out clear. <laughs> That's so... The only lasting beauty is the beauty of the heart. So Aww. let's be in our hearts together and um, continue to have great connections with ourselves and each other. That's what's going to make this planet a better place. So shine your heart. And thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Kelly, for jumping on here with me. And oh, thank um, you. May we transition into the fall. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much for having me, Aya. You're welcome.